very rare company. And we have a very unique philosophy. And I think that philosophy is well-mannered. And I think uh, it has real potential to change the world. So. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Humans in the Loop, our video series here at Human Managed, where we talk to the humans behind our tech. And I'm Deborah, and today we are here with Adam, our AI engineer, who will talk to us about what he does. So tell us more about your background and what drew you to Human Managed. I've been working with computers since a very young age. Programming, playing video games, building PCs. Um, and that kind of fueled my curiosity and studies into university where I studied computer science. From there, I got my first software engineering job uh, and landed this job. So, but I was very curious about what they were doing. Um, the application was via cold email. So I know that's, that's brave. pretty rare these days, but yeah. So what do you do at HM now? I'm facilitating a lot of the AI <clears throat> pipelines that we have. Well, we basically have like traditional problems right. that need to be converted. Mm -hmm. I've kind of come up with like my own framework. Okay. Tell us more about it. It's called human learning through machine learning. Okay. Well, I mean, it's part of the mission of human manage, but... Um, it's a, uh, we can call it HL, um, TML. Okay. <laughs> HL that's, TML. That's is pretty that, catchy. That's yeah, pretty yeah. catchy. Yeah. Uh, and it, it consists of four stages. So the first stage is we have a traditional problem, right? Okay. Um, and that traditional problem is usually, um, solved with a set of rules, uh, within a domain. Okay. Like for instance... Um, maybe we're trying to, uh, create a spam filter. And, and so like traditionally before AI, uh, you would identify words that was linked to spam. So maybe, yeah. maybe in the subject line, uh, common spam emails, um, contain, uh, the words like amazing or like for you in the subject line, right? And so you'd program with a hard filter saying, hey, if you see any of these words, mark it as spam. And maybe you've come across those words from the past, which is why you're able to identify mm -hmm. uh, those words. Now, that's how your problems were solved traditionally. With this new age of AI, that problem now, uh, would be solved with a machine learning algorithm. Um, so you have, again, for you, amazing. These words show up for um, spam emails. With machine learning, you're able to look at the historical data, like all the past emails that have been marked as spam. Mm -hmm. Look at all the features, all the information in that email and then um, associate it with spam. So the machine learning algorithm uh, will be smart enough to know much more than just the subject lines, but maybe like words within uh, the body of the email text. And so that's how you evolve the traditional to ML. Now, the, the third stage is adapting. So once the ML alg algorithm is in place, the algorithm needs to be able to adapt to new data. Right. So, like, for instance, what if <clears throat> the spammers now um, are aware that you've created this filter that blocks out uh, these words? So, like, maybe, maybe they, they've noticed that uh, you're now blocking out for you in the subject line. And so now they, like, convert it to, like, for and then like you, <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah. just these ways to get around the spam mm -hmm. filters. And so a good machine learning algorithm will learn to adapt to these new ways that spammers are trying to get through the filter. So you have 
the traditional, then you introduce the ML algorithm, and then that algorithm adapts. And the last stage is why we're doing all of this is for humans to learn. Okay. Um, and so over time, by running these algorithms, uh, you'll gain new insights about how the spammers are trying to spam you. And maybe um, you find uh, data that you're, you weren't initially like expected to see at the beginning. So for instance, maybe like you uncover some metadata about like devices or locations where the spammers are trying to send spam email. And maybe you find like, oh, all these spammers are actually coming from like, I don't know, uh, the Middle East or something, you know, some, some region. Yeah. That's kind of like the, the framework we're trying to introduce. Okay. Um, and really the, the whole idea of it is a, a focus on humans learning. Um, instead of uh, machines uh, taking over humans, <laughs> we're, we're really focused on the idea of enhancing the human, having humans uh, learn with these algorithms. But if the machines can create um, an adaptive filter to filter out spam, what role do the humans have in that process? Well, they're no longer creating the spam filter. Okay. Um, and you no longer need the domain expertise. You no longer need the, the lower level programming work even uh, to go ahead and implement uh, these filters. Um, you are able with these things in place to focus on what really matters, uh, which is the insights that, uh, that uh, the models give you. Okay, so what would you say are examples of use cases in which your framework can be applied in the company? Literally anywhere. But uh, let's say like education, for instance. Well, traditional way schools teach kids is uh, you have like a single course. Right. Right? And it's just like the same difficulty no matter the student. And the problem with that is... <clears throat> You know, so the, the, the subject or the homework sets, problems, tests, maybe too easy for some, too hard for some. So that's, that's traditional. The, you, you introduce ML, an ML algorithm, by having uh, an algorithm uh, give the problem set difficulty. Like, it, it, it'll change the difficulty based on the individual student. So instead of having this... <clears throat> you know, set right. um, coursework so for... Like one yeah, size fits it, all. Yeah, it adapts okay. to the, the student. So, so maybe this algorithm, like, it's, it's able to, to give different students, you know, um, different, different speeds of, uh, of learning. So you, you have the algorithm adapting at that point. Right. Um, and then the insights that can be learned from that is like... Um, teacher can see across all the students with all these algorithms deployed. Maybe, maybe there's like a math course and uh, the teacher is able to conclude that like students are maybe having a harder time generally with uh, fractions versus decimals. Like they're able to kind of generate these high level insights based on these algorithms and then adjust the, the coursework, uh, adjust these, these algorithms. Um, so that's one, one instance. But like in the specific case of human managed. Oh, in the specific case yeah. of human. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So right now, I mean, we're applying this to, uh, well, as you saw earlier today for SecOps, like, uh, we have an event that comes in and, um, we have a set of rules that need to be taken to, to, to mitigate the, the, the attack or, you know, to, to, to respond to, to some, some, some security threat, right? So traditionally, like most co security companies will follow these set of rules. But like, what if a new event comes in and it's not part of our rules? Then like traditionally, you would have to like update the rules. Uh, but with machine learning, uh, you're able to, again, adapt um, so you know, generally, based off historical events, that this is how you should respond based on a particular event. 
and these conditions. With an adaptive algorithm, you're able to see that, okay, and a similar event has come, and we can intelligently infer that these set of actions should be taken. And then from that, <clears throat> you can, um, once, once those algorithms have been deployed and running, you're able to make higher level insights of, of patterns um, among the events that come in. So what would you say, like all this sounds really interesting, and I see like how it can be used in so many different use cases. Mm -hmm. But what is the most like, as the person who is, I guess, creating that kind of framework, like what's the most like challenging part of doing this whole thing? Challenging part? It's all easy. No. <laughs> uh, making it work is, I think, easy. But making it work automatically and have it run by itself, uh, like every day, without any human intervention. Having it robust, be robust and, and productionized uh, to the point where if things go wrong, it doesn't break, you know, it doesn't fail. Um, I think that's the hardest part. Making it work once is super easy, but <laughs> having it work a million times over and over again is the hardest part. In an ideal scenario with your framework at maximum capabilities, mm. what do you envision it doing? Uh, well, I guess it really would establish a new philosophy um, with an emphasis on humans <laughs> being human managed and all. But too many people think AI is, uh, is like scary. Like, like, when you say artificial intelligence, people think of Terminator and they envision some dystopia. Um, but I think it's going to be, if that ever happens, it's going to be some time. Um, I think in the next five years at least, uh, AI is here to help humans. And so we want to fully maximize that. And so um, with this framework, yeah, in its, in its, in its full light, uh, I think it will, it will it will change the change everyone's perspective on AI and hopefully make it more friendly. So I asked you about what's your like most challenging part of all this. So what's the most fulfilling part? Fulfilling part. Yeah. Fulfilling part about this work is that well, one, it's it's cutting edge. You know, it's we're not doing something. Um, that someone else is doing already. We're a very rare company and we have a very unique philosophy. And I think that philosophy is well-mannered and I think uh, it has real potential to change the world. So by, you know, carrying, carrying out that, that philosophy um, slowly, day by day, it's, it's very, very uh, fulfilling. So can you elaborate on what you mean by cutting edge? Because there are so many companies using AI. There's so many companies that end in dot .ai. You know, there's all sorts going on. Yeah. So what makes you guys different? What makes us different is that we're actually applying it um, to real use cases, to, to real life problems um, that haven't already been solved. And so in that respect, it makes us cutting edge because no one has solved those problems already. Okay. So just to like end this off kind of, what are your top three like pet peeves when it comes to AI and tech? I don't know. I, I'm, 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 I don't like when companies uh, use the word AI as like their superpower. Okay. Like that's all they have to offer is like AI powered this, AI powered that. And it's like, you know, you take AI away from them and they're like completely nothing. But that's, that's, that's definitely a pet peeve. Oh, what I really don't like is, I don't know if you're on Twitter, but uh, it's like every, t every time something new comes out on like AI, anything. Like, here's what you're missing about MCP. And uh, it's just like with every new release, you get these cheesy threads of just 
the most honestly it's just uh, you open these threads and it's nothing even valuable it's like surface level stuff but i understand it's some it provides some value for some people but uh i just like <laughs> i'm i'm <laughs> i'm tired of seeing them <laughs> okay yeah valid I, I guess it's for like beginners in the space yeah. and yeah, it's you fair. know it's accessible it's easy to read it's yeah. not too technical yeah I it's see just what you mean. it's just like it's all i don't the know time, the way constantly. they're like f- formatted also it's like yeah. it's overly uh, energetic and it's like uh that's what gets clicks though yeah it's so clickbaity it's so clickbaity yeah and so building onto your pet peeves i guess we can swing in the other direction and what are your top three like ai tech tools that you use that you enjoy using maybe not the ones that you use all the time but yeah the ones that you like the most i feel like the the suite of ai tools is pretty common for like software engineers these days generally most software engineers today have uh moved from uh your traditional ide which is like uh you know like that software application you use to code nowadays the new ones have ai built into them and so i use one called cursor and so that's basically where I write all of my code. So where do you see AI in 10 years? What, is, what are your predictions, your top predictions? Oh, 10 years. Five to 10 years, okay, foreseeable five, future. Five to, uh, okay. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, what I want to see. Okay, that works. What I want to see, hopefully within the next five years, is an AI celebrity. Like a, like a fake person. Yeah, like a, like to the point where like people aren't aware that it's a fake person. Like, okay, so imagine to, I, an I AI like, celebrity yeah. that is like <clears throat> releasing music on Spotify, SoundCloud, whatever, and it's really good music. You just hear the music, and maybe you see some like AI generated generated face, but like you you think you you think it's like a real person, and then they like come to like social media and start posting like I don't know Instagram posts or like Twitter posts. And it, it accumulates this following. Like, I feel like that is actually not too far away. <laughs> and it's I, something yeah, I, feel I, like, I, something like I kind of want to see. And I feel like someone is actively working on that right now. For sure. That's a very interesting <laughs> thing. I, I haven't, well, I haven't heard that from Yeah, but people. imagine that. It's just yeah, like, I, I mean, it's there just are like, influencers who are AI now. Imagine like all the like heat. Like, mm-hmm. too. Like, all the drama that I could start with other celebrities as well. So you're doing it to watch drama? Yeah. I think it could be entertaining <laughs> as well. Okay. Like a a new, 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 era new of avenue like of fights. entertainment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for your time. Mm-hmm. Um, I really appreciate your insight and your, um, you know, sharing with us about what you do. I think it really opens up a new conversation about what really goes on in, like, the deep depths of AI and mm-hmm. what you can actually, like, apply machine learning to so thank you again and thank you guys for watching um this is the end of today's episode and i hope to see you guys again soon bye (laughs) 